Hey there everyone, Sharon Thomas here from Established Footsteps Ministry and I'm excited about helping you pick your aims for 23 Strong. I have gone through the journey of 23 Strong a couple times already and I've learned some things along the way. So I'd like to give you a few tips that I think will help out as you're picking your aims to get started each month. If you can think of three things, you want your aims to be personalized, you wanna pray about your aims, and then you need to pick them. Remember, you're gonna have six aims if you choose to do all six, because there are two factors, spiritual and physical, and there are three focus points, which are food, fitness, and function. So two times three equals six. So our goal would be to participate in all six, but if you're not ready for that, it's fine to do four, two, even just one. Whatever works for you, remember this is personalized as you're picking your aims. So first of all, one of the tips I have for you is that you need to clearly understand what the distinctions are. And I've tried to put them in little phrases to help you with that. When we're talking about food for our spirit and our physical body, we want to think of the phrase, how will I nourish, okay? When we're talking about fitness for our spirit and body, we want to think about the phrase, how will I move? And when we're talking about function for our spirit and our physical body, we want to think of the phrase, what will I accomplish? So let's talk about each one of those things. We've given you suggestions for each of the aims. You can find them on our website, establishedfootsteps.com, but you don't have to stay within that suggested list. As you pray, the Lord might give you some other creative options. And as he does, we wanna hear what they are because throughout the year of 23 Strong, we're hoping our list of suggestions is going to grow a lot because you're gonna be sharing the different things that you have that the Lord has given you to do during each one of these 23 day cycles. So when we're thinking of spiritual food and physical food, we're talking about that phrase, how will I nourish? So spiritual food, how we're going to feed our spirit. We are offering a Bible study for that for you, and we highly suggest that you participate with us. So that aim, that would already be chosen for you, right? But you don't have to do that. If you would rather do some other kind of spiritual nourishment, using your Bible, of course, we've given you some suggestions, or like I said, there might be some things that you would choose to do even beyond our list. Physically, you want to think of something that you're going to do. For instance, maybe you're going to drink 75 to 100 ounces of water a day. Maybe you're going to omit all sodas and caffeine or alcohol during those 23 days. Maybe you're going to choose to eat only whole foods, nothing packaged or processed at all. Whatever you choose to do, that's what you write down. You make it very specific so that you don't have a lot of wiggle room because you want to stick to your aim. When we're talking about fitness, how will we move our spirit and how will we move our body? We wanna distinctly understand that we're talking about movement. It's not something specifically we're trying to accomplish that comes in the function. Now these can overlap a little bit and they can tend to get a little fuzzy in the brain, but you can distinguish them clearly. How are you gonna move on a daily basis? Again, we're gonna provide that spiritual movement, that spiritual fitness for you. It will go in tandem with the Bible study that we'll be providing for the spiritual food, if you choose to participate in that. But otherwise, if you don't, look at our list of suggestions. We have plenty of ways for you to move your spirit on a day-to-day -day basis, and you can then personalize them as the Holy Spirit leads you to do so. But when we're talking about physical movement, I think we all know what exercise is, right? But it's the get up and doing it that really matters. So how are you gonna do that? What's your aim? Maybe you're gonna choose to do 7,000 steps a day. Maybe you're gonna choose to do Pilates every day. You wanna choose something that you're going to do each and every day. It, there can be variety in how you do it. Like for instance, you could walk at the park or you could walk on a treadmill, but how are you going to do that? What is it that you're going to do? How are you gonna move your body in these 23 days every single day. And then we get into that function. And this is where we're talking about something we want to accomplish. So for instance, 
It might be a prayer, just like you could pray during the spiritual fitness, but prayer in the spiritual function is, I wanna know every day at the end of the 23 days that I have prayed for my friend who isn't saved. I, I wanna know every day at the end of 23 days that I have worked on memorizing this passage of scripture and at the end of the 23 days, I'm gonna have completed it. It's something that you want to complete and feel like there's an accomplishment. And then that function in the physical realm is something that you wanna use your body to accomplish. Maybe you have a closet you need to clean out or you've got files that need to be organized, or there's a podcast that you've really been wanting to listen to, but you just haven't made time. Try to give 10 minutes a day to that thing. That's what you want to accomplish. By the end of that 23 days, you want to have it listened to, or you want to have a book read, or you want to work on a project, maybe clean out the garage. There's so many different things. And so all you need to do is just ask the Lord to give you direction, pray through it, know that you can personalize it, and then Go for it as you are distinguishing each one of these aims. A couple things to consider as you're making those decisions. One of the things you need to ask yourself is, is this really doable? You know, sometimes as the beginning of the year comes and we've got all these dreams and aspirations, we can jump in so big that it's really not even doable. So there are things you have to consider. Like for instance, it's January. So are you really gonna be able to get outside and walk 10,000 steps every day? Maybe you have a treadmill. Maybe the cold weather doesn't bother you. Maybe you're willing to do it even if it is freezing. But you need to ask yourself, is this really doable? Are you really only going to be able to eat that amount of calories every day? Make sure it's doable. You want it to be challenging, no doubt, but it also needs to be doable and you need to consider the factors. Now, in doing that, don't talk yourself out of it because we do want the challenge element, but we also need to be wise and ask the Holy Spirit for guidance in that thing. Also, we need to consider the challenges that are going to be there. That kind of overlaps with the is it doable book. For instance, you might know that you have to go on a work trip during those 23 days. So you need to consider that. Can you stay committed during that time? So as you're choosing your aims, you have to consider those kinds of challenges that might be there that are just built into your life and built into your schedule. And that helps you as you're also asking the question, is it doable? I also, I've mentioned this before, and go back to it again. One aim only for each of the six focus points. It's so important to do that. You will overwhelm yourself if you do too many, and then you're going to not follow through. I know the first time that I worked through this challenge, I did more than one on a couple of them and it was too much and I got overwhelmed. Now I stuck to it because I had made that commitment, but I learned in that process, it's not a good idea to do more than one. Six aims and managing those six aims is going to be plenty for you. So one aim only for each of the focus points. Doesn't mean you can't aspire to do other things as well, but what's the one thing you are gonna be committed to no matter what? I also wanna share these few things too. Your aim can be something you already do. For instance, for years and years, I've been in my Bible every single day. That is something I already do. I'm just making distinction of how I'm going to do it this month. So it's not like you've got to add on more things on top of things you already do. If you've created really good habits in your life, that's awesome. Just be clear with yourself. How are you going to move in those habits throughout this experience? Be clear in distinguishing that. And I would encourage you to, if you're doing all six, try to make one especially challenging. Don't make all of them super, super challenging. Make one of them really challenging. The others challenging, okay? But one of them really challenging. It'll cause that, that grit of self-discipline to really have to dig in and it's good for us. When you're choosing the aims, once you've done it, once you've, once you've personalized it and you've prayed and you've picked them and you write them down, and it's important to write them down. Once you've done all that, you're committed. So be committed no matter what.
I've also said this in another one of our videos, but I think it bears repeating. You know what? If you get in a few days and you're like, oh, this is awful. I wish I hadn't chosen this. You know what? You did choose it. And there's a lot of learning in that if you'll stick it out. It's only 23 days. You can make it. You can do it. So stick it out. You're not a failure if you don't, but you're definitely getting stronger if you do. This is not about trying to accomplish and move in these aims and all of that. This is about doing it, actually following through, being committed to what we say we're going to do. And there's something really special that happens on the inside of us when we step into even those hard moments. So I encourage you, no matter what, you do it. I know as I have journeyed through the 23 days twice already in 2022, as I was prepping for all of this and just testing it out, there were a few times where, I mean, I'm literally crawling into bed and I went, oh no, I haven't done whatever the thing was. And I had to wrestle with myself. One night I even said to my husband, I told him, he said, but you said you were going to do it. And he was right. And so I got up and I went downstairs and it took about 10 minutes and I did it. And I felt so much stronger climbing into bed for the second time, knowing I had stayed true to what I said I was going to do. And that strength will then come out in the other moments in our life when we need to have that grit of self-discipline, when we don't have those boundary lines. One of the scriptures that you're gonna see over and over again throughout this experience says this, the boundary lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. So as you're picking your aims, pick those boundary lines and then commit to stay in them and know that boundaries are good for us. They're pleasant. They produce pleasant things. They may not be pleasant in the moment, but they produce pleasant things. Structure and routine and habits are good for us. And so I encourage you step into this 23 strong as you pray, personalize and pick these aims, you're gonna be getting stronger each and every day. We're here to help you. If you have questions, reach out to us. We're gonna be cheering you on. I'm looking forward to you being a part of 23 Strong. I'll see you soon.